Are you serious? Are you serious? Folks, in Germany, a migrant shelter was cheered by onlookers as this thing was up in flames. The people were cheering. They came out on the streets and cheered that the migrant shelter was burning down. Now, there was no migrants living there. This, this, this entire facility was being prepared for migrant uh, for migrants that have uh, poured into Germany, now over a half a million. And so now they're starting to give the housing to the migrants and leave the homeless Germans on the street. And this is why there's this outcry. The Germans are saying, look, you're giving away everything that we have to them and you're not helping us. And these Muslims are coming over here and they're accosting our women and, uh, and they're trying to force Sharia law and, and they're fighting with us in the streets. And so when this fire broke out at a building that was planned to house migrants in eastern Germany, it was greeted with cheers from the onlookers. They even uh, got in the way with their cars and different things to block the fire trucks trying to prevent the firemen and the police even from getting into the fire. And uh, as the building burned, the crowds cheered and cheered. This is sending a real message to Angela Merkel, a real strong message to Angela Merkel. It's not going to work. You can't overwhelm us, and then uh, we're just not going to put up with it. And so that's what's happening, folks. This is the and look what happened, to Sweden. Sweden took in 160,000 migrants, and now they've decided to ship 80,000 of them back. They're going to try to keep women and children and families, but they're, they're sending these, all these men who came with no other family members uh, that are highly suspected of potential sleeper cells and jihadis. They're shipping these guys back. So Sweden has already pushed back. The people of Germany are pushing back on Angela Merkel, and uh, Angela Merkel um, continues to uh, fight hard for this new world order agenda, and that is control out of chaos and uh it's getting ugly in europe folks it's getting real ugly the eu has told greece they got 90 days to fix this immigrant problem flooding into the european union through the doors of greece and if greece don't fix it the eu will physically shut down their borders and just shut greece out of the eu uh by shutting its borders i mean this is getting serious uh, it's getting very serious, but this is what you get with an Arab Spring of Democracy. President Obama, who started this Arab Spring of Democracy, and said, yeah, let's overthrow all these strong men, all these dictators. And after he overthrew Ben Ali of Tunisia and Hazem Mubarak of Egypt and Muammar Gaddafi of Libya and Ali Alabala Saleh of Yemen and tried to overthrow Assad of Syria, and there was protesting in Bahrain and Kuwait and uh, uh, all of these, Saudi Arabia even. And at the end of the day, it's turned into a Middle East madness. And at the end, that's created chaos now affecting the European unions. And it's going to affect the United States. It's going to affect the Aussies down under in Australia. I'm, I'm serious. And uh, this is all part of the New World Order's agenda. Control out of chaos. It's absolutely an old right out of the old playbooks of the communist that has worked its way into the new world order, the new world order, the Illuminati. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it as this is moving rapidly toward a one world government, the beast in the Bible. It's like a monster with seven heads and ten horns. It's extremely ugly, and it's rising right before our very eyes. And I think people sometimes just... Keep thinking, as long as it's not affecting my street, I'm going to be okay. Well, it won't be long. It, uh, seriously, it won't be long, and it will be down your street. And then it's going to be too late to cry then. You have to be, have more um, uh, you know, vision than that. The Bible says without a vision, the people will perish. Well, you better visualize a nation going to hell in a handbasket by the rise of the new world order. Now, here's what it says in Revelation chapter 13. The Bible said, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns were ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. 
And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth um, as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. That's Lucifer giving the authority to the beast. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Some people have even sent me emails saying, could this migrant issue that's wounding the EU eventually be healed and be in what strengthens the beast? That's just a question. I don't think that's what this meant here, but uh, you know, I'm going to put, put it out there simply because folks have sent me that question. And it says here that, uh, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, Who is likened to the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given to him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it goes on to tell you. It, it talks about the mark of the beast and then the rise of the Antichrist and the false prophet, all of that in Revelation 13. It's a powerful chapter. You should read it because you're starting to live very close to the beginning of it. We're extremely, extremely close. We're watching this beast rise as we speak. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to Bible prophecy. It's getting ugly out there. Are you saved?